Hi, this is Jeff West, and the purpose of this video is to show you how to get started with AppG127 using NPM to install it, and then the A127 command line to interact with AppG127 and create projects. So what I'll do is I'll use uh, NPM to install AppG-127. I'm using uh, super user privileges here so I can install A127 on my command line. Uh, in this case, I am using NPM version 1.4.25. I would recommend that you use 1.3 or higher, if not the latest version. 1.2 and before has some uh, compatibility issues with the repository schema uh, with NPM that I've seen. So now uh, I've run NPM install and I have A127 on my command line that I can use. With this command line client, you can do things like create account configurations, create projects, download and use user grid as well as the user grid portal, uh, display configuration that you have specified, which is more of an advanced case that we'll get to in a different video, and of course display this help command. So what I'll do now is do A127 and projects create, and you need to specify a name. So this, this clones uh, or gets the example project, skeleton project actually from GitHub, runs npm to install the dependencies. So let's do take a quick look at the files here. So this is a quick display of the files that are here. And let's take a look at this controller. Actually, let me do this, A127 project start. So right out of the box, we give you the scaffolding for a working, none other than hello world API. So I want to run a curl command against this, I get hello Scott, which gives you a starting point of a working API that you can then build off of. So uh, let's take a look at the logic that it would be required from a developer to actually make this happen. So, uh, some boring, easy stuff, typical stuff. The only real lines of code here are three lines of code. Um, you could, of course, get this in fewer lines of code, but we won't complain with approximately 15 lines of code here. So, all you have to do here is implement a function uh, that takes a request and response. Uh, add it to your exports, and that's all, it's to, all it takes to actually implement the API itself. So let's take a look at the Swagger editor. You can open it up by doing a127 project edit. So this will pop the Swagger editor window, which is running on the local host. On the top right, we have links to documentation to help you with Swagger stuff. And in the top left, we have links, there we go, to help you with AppG127 and Volos, and also a link to submit an issue. So here, let's take a look at this document. Of course, we have kind of the top level information, whether we accept HTTP, HTTPS, consume and produce JSON. In this case, we're not using any Volos resources, so this line is effectively pointless and not necessary. But to give you a good starting point and figure out where to put your resources, we include it in the Skeleton Project. Here, of course, we have our path that says hello. It's mapped to hello underscore world, which is the controller file that we just looked at here. And the operation ID is hello, which maps to the function, uh, the export of this node module, which is hello here as well. Scrolling down, we can see parameters where we're specifying the name parameter that is a query parameter. We say that it's not required uh, and it's a type of string. On a 200 response, we return something that looks like this, which has one string property, which is uh, hello to the person's name case of an error, similar type of response. So here we have our, our 200 response and the default response for everything else. You can of course define all the other HTTP codes that you wish 
and the associated models for the one for the codes that your uh, API will return. Let's take a look. Actually, what I'll do is I'll open that up again, uh, show you a few different things. Let's make this true. Uh, as I make changes, we'll see all changes saved, and we'll make this hello person. So changes are saved. Close the window. You don't have to file save as you're as you're editing. Uh, the changes are saved uh, in the background. So what I'll do is I will start the project. This is a static string, so of course if I were to do this again, it should not work, which is expected. Let's do hello person. Uh, I won't give the, the query parameter, and then it will say parameter name is required. And this is validation that's being done by the Swagger tooling, not the API itself. As you saw here, we're not doing anything here to, to validate the parameters on the request. We're just returning the response. So that's one of the benefits of uh, using this, this model. So now if I do name, uh, yeah, name equals Jeff. Now we see that I get hello Jeff. There you go. So uh, next what I'll show you is how to deploy this to Apogee. So A127 account create. Uh, this is my default. So uh, we have either an Apogee provider, we'll also be adding Heroku and Elastic Beanstalk and uh, whatever other node platforms that we desire. Uh, if you don't have an account and you hit no, it'll pop up a window and where you can sign up for an account. I do have an account. Uh, I have it on our cloud service, so that's the default API. If you have, uh, if you're using an on-premise version or uh, one that's not in our cloud, then you can specify the base URI here. Uh, I will also do jwest1271. User ID jwest at com. Uh, we'll do this in the test environment. Uh, we'll use the default which is HTTP virtual host. So when you create uh, an account pointer here and it's pointed at Apigee, we'll install the Apigee remote proxy uh, in your org. And that's to use the Velos services remotely if you choose to do so. So depending on your connection speed and the load on the system, it should be fairly quick. Uh, as part of this, what it's doing, it's deploying the proxy, it's creating a developer and getting a, an API key that it can use to communicate. But you don't have to use that if you don't want to, which is what we're doing here with our Hello World application. So we'll just give that a minute to complete. So there we go, all done. It shows you the URI for the Apigee remote proxy and the key that it will use. Of course, hiding your password for things like videos and webcasts. So now that I have this, I will go into my projects directory, my project. Now what I'll do is A127 project deploy. So this will deploy it to the account that I just created. I only have one account, so it is the default by default. Once this is done, it'll print out the URL where the app is deployed. So here, we, since I specified the default virtual host, it's doing just HTTP. So now what I'll do is we'll call this slash hello name equals Jeff, and that's not going to work because hello person is the right way to do it. So I get hello Jeff, and since I specify the query parameter as required, when I do this, I get the same behavior. So the idea is to give you a development environment locally, and then once you're done, you want to test it on the cloud to be able to deploy it to the cloud. Finally, what we'll do, I'll show you how to how easy it is to play with user grid. Uh, I do want to clean up real quick. 
uh, there is an A127 directory in your home directory when you uh, start using 127. There's an accounts file that has your account details, and then there's user grid directory here. So what I'm going to do is delete this stuff, and then what we will do is A127 user grid download. What this will do is it will download user grid and the user grid portal, which you can both uh, run both of those locally. And we'll see where the files go. So here's the path to the files I'm already in that directory. So here it is. Then I can do a127 user grid start. Okay, there we go. So by default, you get test and super user accounts. Test and test, log in. And here we go. I have app Apache user grid running on my laptop and you can create uh, collections. So we have the full functionality of Apache user grid here on your laptop which is really awesome. So you can manage your users, groups, roles, data, all that kind of stuff, create multiple apps. And then in the future, we're, and then the very near future, actually, we're gonna have tools that can migrate this data from your laptop or wherever you do the development and put it into Apigee in addition to deploying your APIs in Apigee. So it's gonna be really cool. Then of course we can do a 127 user grid stop to stop user grid from running. And there we go. There's the full introduction to the A127 command line. Hope you enjoyed it, and please check out our other videos. Thanks.